It's been just over a week since Kevin Durant requested a trade, according to our Adrian Wojnarowski from the Brooklyn Nets. And now we welcome the man to set, Woj, and our senior front office insider, Bobby Marks. Thank you so much for hanging with us here on NBA Today. So, Woj, I'll start with you. Just what's the latest on Kevin Durant? Well, uh, Brooklyn Nets GM Sean Marks, you know, has arrived in Vegas for Summer League and so have uh, essentially all the other executives in the league. And it gives teams a chance to talk in person. You know, I think have a different kind of conversation than you can have on the phone. I think especially when you're trying to put together something more complicated, three or four team deals. But, you know, as you said in the open, Malika, it's just been over a week since Kevin Durant asked for the trade. And trades of this magnitude for players like Kevin Durant, typically they don't come together quickly, especially he asked for the trade after the draft. Sometimes a draft can be a deadline or the trade deadline. That's not the case. We're kind of in the open field of the offseason. And there's no sense among, I think, with the Nets or with teams talking to the Nets that they have tremendous urgency or they're trying to move this along quickly to find a resolution, get a deal. They want to get a deal. They want to get the best deal they can. But, you know, these things start to, they take on a life of their own. And I think you'll see some more of those face-to-face -face conversations here uh, in the coming week and 10 days. But that doesn't guarantee there's going to be a KD trade in Summer League. This may move on. And remember, the Nets have Kevin Durant under contract for four years. And that is a pretty good reason not to rush into anything. Maybe slow play this over time and look and see if you don't have the kind of blockbuster deal you want. You don't just make the trade. Bobby, how are you about evaluating all of this? Well, I'm looking at it. We're in the offseason, and there's no, uh, like, um, the emotional element of it all. No team has lost four games in a row. Phoenix has, right, we're still in the honeymoon period. So it's a lot harder to make a blockbuster deal of this nature because everybody likes their roster right now. Right. Now, that changes when we get to November and December, and a team like the Suns or even the Raptors, who are one of the favorites here, has gone on a six-game losing streak and they see Kevin Durant as that missing piece and then all of a sudden the asking price is a lot more in December than it is in mid-July. So just a little bit of a scene set here Woj for fans who are watching at home we've talked about summer league as the first time these general managers can get into the room face to face what do you expect the mindset to be for general managers as they head here with this sort of looming? Well first thing it's kind of held up the rest of free agency there's not a lot of high level players left but the DeAndre Andre Ayton situation still lingers out there. Um, but I think a lot of other uh, teams, agents who are trying to get deals done feel like there's a sense of waiting on the Kevin Durant situation. And they may be waiting a while. I, I think especially when you start, like Bobby said, when you're in the off season and you're, you're not facing the urgency of pressure from your owner because the team's struggling, the chance to get at a Kevin Durant, it's not like teams are upping their offers all the time. Teams are going to try not uh, to, um, uh, 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 you know, make deals against their own last deal. Yeah. And so I, I think right now uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this situation plays out even through Summer League. But I think if you're the Nets, you can get a sense really of, of how far perhaps some teams are going to go. And if you feel like you've gone, they've gone as far as they're going to go with you, is that good enough for Kevin Durant? Because in almost any scenario, you're probably not getting value for Kevin Durant. There's no deal you look at and say, hey, we're better for this. It's just the best you can get. And again, with the four years left on his contract, you can wait it out. Okay, my question is, for a guy like Kevin Durant and the Nets, if it is still an amicable situation, for him to start the season, do you not think that that might also, as it, when you said everybody's in the honeymoon phase, well, what about if the Nets start the season and they're not playing well or Kevin Durant? Now, all of a sudden, wouldn't that possibly decrease his value? Because it's like, hey, they're going through some things. We're going to we're gonna sit pat and we're going to, uh, you know, not really, like, get the most aggressive offer. Is there a little bit of tension that we don't want to start the season with Kevin Durant there? Because of the potential stress it could call on the, cause on the franchise? No, I, I, I see it, RJ, but I also think Kevin Durant, you know him, he is going to come to play every night. He's going to play at a high level. He cares too much about it. And so I don't know that his value decreases. If he's on the floor, he wants to dominate. I would be surprised that Kevin Durant would approach it any other way. And so I think people out there, they know what they're getting with Kevin Durant. Uh, the question is, how much are they willing to give up? And how, how could Brooklyn walk away with this and be able to say, we can justify moving a player, an all-time great player, 
you know, essentially in his prime at 34 years old um, and have something to show for it that we can live with. Bobby, how do we expect, how aggressively do we expect teams to pursue Kevin Durant when we're talking about, as Woj said, just a lot of time before the beginning of the season? Yeah, I mean, I think you have to look at it. You know, I'm looking back from the Carmel Anthony situation in 2010 where that basically went started in September and ended in February. That took six months to basically to get it done, and it cost New York gutting their roster. I think that's the concern as far as gutting your roster for Kevin Durant. I, I remember being here three years ago with the Spurs and Raptors, R.C. Buford, Masai Ujiri. Uh, Kawhi Leonard was going into the last year of his deal. It was very different. But they, Masai Ujiri did a job of sort of waiting out the rest of the market on Kawhi Leonard. He was That was the best offer they had in San Antonio. They finally had a move on it. The Nets aren't in the same situation. This isn't a player who's headed in on an expiring contract and who the Spurs felt may not even show up to training camp if we start the season. Well, and that's why we've used the word unprecedented so many times. We haven't seen a player of this magnitude with this much time left on his contract request to trade. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.